the false paradigm model. So false paradigm model says this, that there is underdevelopment in underdeveloped countries, and that is not because of inherent fault in these countries, but because there are some external advisors from the foreign countries, and they are telling what world in their countries may also work for this underdeveloped country. This may not be true. That is what we have written. It is not because of their inherent faults, but this is because of the misguided development strategies. Who is misguiding them? It's not that they want to misguide, but what world in their countries, in their developed countries, it may not exactly work in the developing countries, in the underdeveloped countries. And this takes the form of various things. One, they can take up inappropriate models. So experts from World Bank, experts from IMF, experts from other countries, they are mainly working on the mainstream economic models which worked in the developed countries without looking at the local picture here. And because of that, these models may not work very efficiently in the developing country. Then local elite control. So there are people in developing countries who are elites and who want to have power over their own country. How is this power structure going to work? They know it very well that these models which they are suggesting, they may not work very efficiently in the developing countries, but they still give support to them. Why? Because they have their own vested interest. They want to have more power and it creates more inequality in the system. And they want to grab on that inequality. Lack of relevant knowledge. When these models are being applied exactly in the developing countries without consulting local policy leaders or local policy makers, it will not help these developing countries. Because without looking at the problems in the developing country, if you just say what worked in that country is going to work in this country, also it is not going to work. I'll give you an example. For example, um, in US, let's say, every child has their own individual laptops. And the kind of the work which they do in school is research-based, let's say. Now, there are smaller class sizes. But here exactly, if you're going to teach in a similar way, when the teacher-student ratio is very skewed, there are already very large classrooms. Students, they do not have good internet access. They don't have their individual laptops. And then you say, no, no, uh, this kind of education is going to work. It may not work exactly. Right? So you need to find out the ways how this would be applied in the developing countries, in the underdeveloped countries. So that is the point. How can you design more effective strategy? Even if you want to use the same models which have worked in the developed countries, you have to see whether you can contextually apply those in the developing countries. So let's take a case for India, for example. You have agriculture, industry, services. You have to see what kind of skilled labor force you have. What is the foreign structure which you want to apply here? How is that going to help throughout the economy? So all of that. You have to see, first of all, the problems which our economy faces. And then can those models be applied exactly here like that? Then you have inclusive decision making. As the name suggests, if you are applying for any model, any new model to be applied in my own country, I should be asking local policy makers. I should be taking their opinions. I should be taking the opinion of civil society that can this model be applied? If they say no, then can we say, can it be partially applied? So what problems we will face? How can those problems be solved in the local context? Gradual implementation. So gradual implementation is that you need to see whether these models could be applied in one go 
or gradually. Finally, what should happen is that every developing countries, they have the unique set of problems. So you should see if you apply what worked in the developed countries, if you want to apply that, can you get away with one roadblock first? Then see, can you apply that model? Can you get away with another roadblock first? Uh, then, then can that be applied? So the point is it should be a gradual implementation, right? So if you want to have a research-based education, are the teachers really equipped for that? Have you provided those kind of training here? So those things have to be seen in the con in the context of the local country. It has to be gradually implemented and you have to make stronger institutions. Institutions. So if you want to develop upon education, you have to make institutions related to education very proper, which could mimic the level of development of the developed countries. And then you also have local knowledge integration. So you are not applying these models in the developed countries in US, in UK, you are applying it in India. So the knowledge, the cultural knowledge, social knowledge, religious knowledge, which is required to implement these models here in my country, those knowledge should be used. So this is the way models could be applied how you can apply them effectively, how you can design them effectively.